Benjamin Franklin once said, nothing is certain except death and taxes. And the more I grew up, the more I agree with it. But it sounds quite dispiriting, right? I mean, this whole cycle of growing up, getting a job, paying your bills, and when once everything is done, death. But the worst part is in death, but it's inevitability is. And it honestly makes me anxious because you see, if you can't escape it, then it surely means one thing, that we're just running out of time. There's a terminology behind this. It's called chronophobia or time anxiety. So people with chronophobia are usually afraid that their time is running out and that they won't be able to accomplish everything that they need to do. And I'm sure, at least once in our life, we all must have felt like this. But have you ever wondered why? Why don't we feel this sudden fear and anxiousness of falling behind time? We wouldn't feel it if everything in our life was stable, secure and fine. But it's not. There are always constant alterations that keep occurring in our life and this is what leads us in this never-ending cycle of seeking stability and certainty. This, this is not just the example of certainty and stability but also there's a theory behind this. It's called the hedonic treadmill. So, the hedonic treadmill or the hedonic adaption says that there is an observed tendency of humans to come back to the relative stage of happiness after some major positive or negative events that have occurred in their life. So, to put it even more simply, it is literally conceptualized on a treadmill that no matter how hard you try to gain an increase in happiness, you will always remain at the same point. That same point is the set point of your happiness. But you see, what I've come to realize in recent years is that we all have collectively developed this point of view that once, once we get to that next stage in our life, which it could be anything, it could be getting a new home, getting in a college, getting ahead in a career, settling down, whatever it is, we believe that once we get to that next stage in our life, most of the uncertainties that we are dealing with now would fade away with time at that stage and everything will be fine after that. But as soon as we reach that stage, we are now introduced to new unreliabilities relevant to that stage. But we all know this fact, right? So what does this actually mean and most importantly, how can we deal with it? As a teenager, I've been in monotonous situations like self-doubt, seeking validation, giving up the forty in time because what's the point of it if you don't even know you're going to succeed or not? This is how I step into vagueness and seeking stability puts us in a position where we want are bound to seek validation. Two, are you willing to take responsibility of our own life? And three, becoming pessimistic and not aim high. Before coming to the first point, which is validation, let me give you an example. And everyone, feel free to imagine yourself in this one. Let's say you are an adult and you are in your mid-twenties or thirties and you've decided to learn how to swim. All in sundry knows how to swim and after years of watching everyone else having the time of their life, you've decided to give it a shot. So you, so you go to a swimming club, okay? You sw go to a swimming club and you see that the people of your age are the ones who are swimming effortlessly. Whereas beginners like you are the ones who are just five year old kids. So when you see no one else like you in that position, you're even left more underconfident. So you come back. And you go to the Google and you search something like this. You search, can I learn swimming in, in my mid-twenties or mid-thirties or can anyone learn swimming in his or her mid-twenties or thirties? Now, of course, the internet would say yes. But what if it would have, it would have said no? What if websites like Reddit and Quora would have said no? It wouldn't stop you from doing your thing but would have certainly added to your diffidence and decreased your self-esteem. But the question arises, why was there a need for us to go and seek validation from any random stranger on the internet in the first place for such a simple thing like learning a new thing? This is because we as humans have this urge to find solutions to our problem in all the ways possible, physical, financial, emotional, as to get more validation and to get more firmness. And this is why we need this, we have this need to seek confirmation as well. Questions like, Will I be able to do this? Am I good enough? Will this ever happen? We ask these questions to everyone, even Google. 
question. Will I be able to do this or not? Yes. The answer we want to hear, no. The answer we are afraid to confront. At every new step, every new stage in our life, we doubt whether we are capable of, of doing something or not and hence need a reminder or say validation from other people of our own capabilities and abilities that we possess. This affects our decision making skills. Because then we depend on others and others opinion and approval to see our lifestyle and live according to what they say. Now moving ahead, see the thing is that you know waiting for the right thing, seeking validation and finally making the right decision is not just the result of our own actions but of the circumstances that we surround ourselves by. Which brings us back to our talk about changes and how it helps us to grow. But you see to grow up we also need to take complete responsibility of our own self, of the progress we make, of the efforts we put, and most importantly, the decisions we make, the mistakes we commit, and the actions we do. But how many times does this actually happen? Because let's be honest here. How many times do we actually apologize for something that we did do, instead of just randomly explaining an excuse behind this, or maybe just even more simple, blaming it on others. This is the most simplest thing we can do. Of course, you would ask that why would I talk about this? Because like I said, this is the easiest thing to do. To run away from problems. To get rid of it. And for that, we just make random explanation behind it. We give excuses. But what I've come to perceive is that once, that once we start doing this, it just makes our problem even more complicated. It makes them even more problematic. It makes us frustrating. And most importantly, it restricts us from growing up. This is the most basic example of us avoiding to take culpability over our faults versus taking liability over our er errors and mistakes. This small behavior change creates a huge difference in not just how we live our life but also how we deal with mutability. Because when we do this, we enable ourselves to deal with change. Now moving ahead again. After all of this, you see, you know, working on yourself, being responsible, working hard for your future, you feel that no matter how hard you try, the future always remains inconsistent. So what's the point of working so hard anyway, right? So let me give you an example again. Let's say you're preparing for an exam, a competitive exam to get into a desirable college. And or maybe you're preparing for an interview to get into your dream company, whatever you like. But while preparing, you just question yourself. What's the point of this? Why should I work so hard when there are thousands and lakhs of other people who are trying for the same job, the same role. The chances of me getting in there are less than 0.1%. So I should just give up, right? There's no point of it anymore. See, that's the thing we need to avoid. Because let me count three things that will happen when you prepare for something big in your life. One, you might get it. Two, you might not get it. Three, you might get it but soon realize it wasn't the option for you. But regardless of the result, the efforts you've put, the progress you've made will definitely take you to somewhere better which you couldn't have been able to achieve if you would have just given up in the very beginning. That's the thing about uncertainty. It can turn your life into a hundred different ways possible and avoiding the damage you think it will cause is also avoiding the wisdom, the courage and the experience it will help you gain. It's like you letting your fear take control over your decision while it stops you from being hopeful, optimistic, or even being realistic. But now, now that we know that since life is more than just surviving, to live it fully, one must be able to make changes and to embrace the uncertainty. So, as we journey through life, let us confront these changes with courage and wisdom, and while doing so, define the richness of our purpose and existence. Thank you.